Boy, could the chart have not been more clear? Wow. Hi, everybody. Thomas Miller. It's Monday, October 9th, and we're going to, you know, I've struggled with the name of this podcast sometimes. I wanted it to be fun descriptions of astrology, but sometimes the stuff we have to talk about is not fun. And this long weekend is certainly one of those. I'm going to talk through these things, and then let's close today in a moment of silence. And then that way you can have, in the context of this or other areas of your life or other observations of yours around the world, you could offer prayers for those affected. Okay, so this situation in Israel and the Gaza Strip, this, I think, is going to be huge It's already drawing in neighboring countries. I'm not going to get into any of the politics of this like I don't, but let's talk about some things of what has happened. So first of all, the chart. I mean, could it not have spoken any louder? Pluto stationing tomorrow night at 9, 10 p.m. There are no direct aspects today, no lunar activity today. The moon is still in Leo, so we are clean today. We will talk about the week and, of course, the big one on Saturday, the eclipse coming up as the week unfolds. Today we're going to camp here. So Pluto stationing, and then last week's Mars-South Node conjunction. We certainly picked that apart. Mars squaring Pluto. So this attack happened the day before that exact square. That was yesterday at 9.04 p.m. And then, of course, a couple of other factors. We could consider Venus squaring Uranus, Jupiter applying to conjoin Uranus next year, but then, of course, the Yods, those powerful, mysterious, fated appointments of destiny. We had three last week. Pluto on the top of one with the moon and Venus at the base. And then Venus at the top of one with Pluto and Neptune at the base. And then Neptune at the top of one with Venus and Mars and the South Node at the base. And then, of course, the eclipse coming up on Saturday in Libra. That chart has a 10th house focus, countries, the leadership of countries, all of that, and it also has a yod. And you want to hear this one? The sun and the moon in the 10th house is at the top. Neptune and Uranus are at the base. Now, I will say this. The yod has some wide orbs, not in any kind of normal context, but I'm saying it pushes three degrees with Neptune, three and a half degrees. So if you can handle that, then we have a full-blown yod in the eclipse chart. So I spent a lot of time over the weekend, time I didn't really have, but I wanted this to be right and I wanted it to be thought out. I even went back and reviewed the history around the formation of the nation of Israel in 1948 and everything leading up to that. I'm going to stay as an observer. I don't think you can look at this, at least in my position, any other than as an observer. Let's take a look at a few things of how the charts unfolded. So at the time of the attack at 6.30 a.m. local time on Saturday, Mars and the South Node were in the first house. Now this is not relative to either Israel or Palestine. This is just what was in the sky. Mars and the South Node in the first house. Chiron and the North Node in the opposite seventh house. So this is war. What have we been talking about with this nodal axis? In fact, the description that we said when the South Node entered Libra and the North Node entered Aries was that this was going to be a period where not being a doormat and standing up for yourself was going to be the theme. Well, obviously this takes it to the extreme, but that's a pulse behind this. And there it is. I mean, I doubt they planned this by astrology, but there it was. Pluto, stationing to go direct tomorrow, is at the bottom of the combined chart with Israel. War on the homeland, death and destruction, and it's in the fourth house. So not only is it a battle for homeland for both parties, but also the fourth house can be interpreted as the end of the matter. We'll see how that one plays out. Gemini rules the cusp of the ninth house, division of international land. As I mentioned with the yacht, Neptune and Uranus are sextile. Saturn is not as much in play here, but it is opposite the 11th house of large groups of people. And Neptune is in the 6th house of psychological integration. This whole situation is an integration of all these centuries of this ongoing battle. Millennia, really. Now, after the bombing, Hamas released a statement. Quote, 
the priority of the operation is to protect Jerusalem and the Al-Aska Mosque, to stop the plans of the Zionist occupation that aim to Judaize them, and to crush all plans of the Zionist regime to build their alleged Third Temple of Solomon on the ruins of the first mosque for Muslims, Al-Aska, or near it, end quote. Now, for those of you who know my background story from the Subconscious Mind Mastery podcast, know that I grew up in a fundamental Christian, Baptist mostly, home. My mother was fascinated, infatuated by biblical prophecy. God rest her soul, she would not have slept since Saturday and probably would not all week. Why? Because all of biblical prophecy fundamentally rotates around the figure of the Antichrist mentioned in Revelation entering a temple and breaking a covenant with the Jews. Now, you also know, if you know my story, that I threw out all of my prior religious upbringing, and I kind of wiped the slate clean, and I was like, I'm going to rebuild this. But this is one of the areas that I've had my eye on that whole time. But I just thought I would keep an eye on biblical prophecy and determine, was it some misguided bad trip that somebody had 2,000 years ago, or does this unfold? And all of Bible prophecy has always focused on this very conflict. So when I found that statement, I was like, oh, wow. Because I had known since the 70s that there was a big effort to rebuild a temple on that site. And what we're talking about here, if you're not familiar, is al Aska is obviously the Muslim term for that location. And Temple Mount is the Christian slash Jewish term. When you see those landscape pictures of Israel and you see the dome of the rock, that golden dome, that is a mosque that I was able to enter, actually. Our family traveled there in high school, and I was able to go in. And the rock is sacred to all three Abrahamic religions. To the Christians and Jews, it is where Abraham laid Isaac as a sacrifice to God before God spared him and provided the ram. To the Muslim, it is where Muhammad ascended to heaven. So a very sacred site. And then there is a mosque in that whole complex. Goes by a couple of names, but al Aska is good enough for here. Well, a couple of weeks ago, and even apparently during Ramadan, Israeli soldiers, and I I couldn't find a better word. They use settlers. I don't think that's the best word. But Israelis were escalating their presence in that temple-slash-mosque compound site. Then the other thing I found was that there were three earthquakes over the weekend. One was in Mexico, 6.0. One was in Afghanistan, 6.3. That one was deadly. Over 2,000 people were killed so far. And then a 6.7 in New Guinea, 666. Why is that significant? Well, because in biblical prophecy, again, when you go back to one of Jesus' comments in the book of Matthew, He said that nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. But these are just the beginning of the birth pains. Now the other thing you've seen, and then I'm going to get out of here, is that this was the 50th year plus one day from the last major war of this area, which was in 1973 on October 6th. Now I found these numbers. I have not validated them I didn't have time to go back and look at old charts from that time period and validate these exact numbers. But I do know that these things happened during that time. Crude oil went from $5 to 50, according to this article. Interest rates from 6.5% to 18. I know that was true. Gold went from 42 to $875. Remember that too. So a lot here hinging on this whole situation, and that's why we will follow it closely astrologically here. All right. Thank you guys so much. Let's just close out here in a moment of silence in your own personal space for all of these people who have been affected. We're talking about human lives here. We're talking about souls. We're talking about people with astrological charts who had missions to fulfill, but their journeys were cut short this weekend, either by earthquake or by war. And you may have others for your own personal reflection. So let's remember them now, and I'll see you tomorrow.